first chapter of economics and cost analysis. In this chapter, we're going to go over um, some of these topics. First of all, we're going to talk about the people who's using this science and, and why they are using What's the importance of using uh, cost analysis, economics, and cost analysis? Uh, also, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, importance of going globally and now most of the companies they are competing globally and how that's going to impact them uh, what if one organization they don't want to compete globally what going to happen so we're going to talk about it in this video uh, fluctuation rate is also another important concept that we will be dis will be discussing in this chapter uh, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, the strong dollar and weak dollar what what strong dollars mean and and how that's going to impact the economy of the country how that's going to impact the growth of the industry that we have in the country and the last thing we're going to talk about uh, spreadsheet uh, the usage of the spreadsheet and how we could conduct financial operations using Excel and in the, in the last segment we're going to talk about the uh, process of decision making uh, if you need to make a decision what the steps that you need in order to uh, to make a decision okay let's start with a definition for the economics and cost analysis uh, economics and cost analysis it's uh, it's the science of economics with uh, with the focus on a real application and solutions so the uh, Economics and cost analysis, basically, it's a tools, it's a set of tools, not just one tool, a set of tools that we could use it to analyze, solve, and provide uh, and, and provide solutions for any problems we might have. So it's basically we're using a math science, economic science, engineering science, and also management science all together in one uh, in one science. So we're combining all different kind of sciences like economics, uh, mathematics, management, and all this. We, we come up with uh, a set of tools to help us uh, find a solution for a real problems. Uh, economics and cost analysis is focusing on the time value of money, which means that there's a difference in value between having a dollar in hand today and receiving a dollar at some point in the future. Uh, we need to consider that. And in, in these days, in real application, what we do, it's we call it the interest rate. If you go to the bank and you ask for a loan, they will say, okay, we'll give you this money for an interest rate of 10% of or 12%, whatever the uh, market interest rate uh, for that specific uh, loan. Uh, there's a really important uh, concept that we have to deal with it in this class, and we deal with it in industry, and it's called the cash flow, the money that comes in and out, out of project. And this is really important to track it because we need to determine uh, what the money are going out and what's the expensive for that and what's the profits and the, the gains that we can get from the from a specific project so they will also the the businesses the business owners once the they study the cash flow they will be able to determine the number of years required to return their uh, investment the the capital their capital of a project so uh, it's really important to uh, to study the cash flow or to do the cash flow analysis because we need to know uh, when we're going to return the initial investment or what we call it the uh, the return of investment per year how how long it will take us to bring the money back now uh, regarding to the people who's using the economics and cost analysis they are could be anybody basically this is a science that affect everyone's life uh, you will look into your personal life you sometimes you use a credit card and the credit card companies they charge you for interest rate and sometimes you have to do a payment a monthly payment uh, so it does affect you as a student it does affect you as a as a teacher does does affect me as a teacher uh, 
parents, uh, um, th there are so many scenarios that I'm going to discuss it in the next uh, uh, slide about uh, when uh, on, and what the what examples that we could use economics and cost analysis in. So you could be a teacher, you could be a parent, you could be a manager, engineer, technologist, health health professional. Uh, it is a really great tool that will impact anybody, and every uh, one can use it in in this uh, in this real life. Here is an example on when to use the uh, economic and cost analysis tools. Uh, when you need to buy a new house, you probably want to think about the monthly payment, the interest rate, and you probably want to think about the terms. Are you going to do the uh, 30 years or 15 years uh, or maybe more or less? Depends on what your income is. Uh, again, when you're using credit cards, it's also important to understand uh, how much the bank are charging you uh, in uh, another example example would be leasing or or buying a vehicle this is also an example of using here's a list of the uh, uh, of application for the economics and cost analysis and when uh, we can use it so um, why is it important to use it it's really important because it is a powerful tool to support decisions for for business for business so if you're gonna make a decision uh, about the future and uh, you're not sure about it so you could use the, uh, the some of the tools that we're gonna discuss in this class to be to make you more confident about making the decisions uh, for the future um, these tools also the economic and cost analysis tools will enable uh, enable you to understand and reduce the complexity of real life problems so uh, sometimes you will get into really complex uh, um, a problem but once you put it down on a paper you start analyzing it you create a, a cash flow chart and you you know what's the end and the outs in terms of money you will be easily understand and uh, understand and analyze the complex situation the other concept that I would like to talk about it uh, here it's the globalization and globalization it's uh, it's affecting everyone these days especially with the technologies that we have these days uh, you could buy anything from anywhere in this uh, in this world, uh, and, and the reason for that it's it has become very easy. You could just go to eBay or Amazon and ask for anything you want, and you will get it from uh, anywhere in the world: China, um, Jordan, uh, any any country. It will take you a couple of weeks to 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 bring it to home, and they will ship it to you to the front door. So competing globally is really important. To, as, as a business owner, it's really important because it will enable you to reach to more customers in a different markets. So this is this is a great. Once you uh, uh, compete globally, you'll be able to reach to people not just just only the neighborhood, the city that you are in, but also you could uh, you could market your business all over the world, and you will have more more customers. But sometimes it's really hard to do uh, business uh, overseas because uh, because you don't know their cultures, their values, um, their customs, beliefs. So if if you really want to open a business in a specific country, first of all, what you need to do is go visit the country, understand their cultures, values, attitude, live with them for a, a little bit, and then uh, you decide if that's a good decision or not. But absolutely, money wise it will you will be able to market your products to more customers and uh, and this is, that means more profit coming to your company uh, as I mentioned technology is, is it's a great tool you don't have to uh, basically uh, invest in that country maybe you could do it from your home you don't have you don't need an office even you could just do it from your home open an eBay account or Amazon account and you could sell your products all over the world and uh, what you could do if you if you compete globally, you can secure your market share in in this in this um, in this business. Um, you you need to uh, build your global recognition as well. And uh, this is this is great because when you have a brand and you want to market it globally, this will uh, will make you stronger uh, business uh, to to live in this global market. 
So cost analyst, uh, what you need to do as a cost analyst, you need to be familiar with the currency exchange rates. And there are so many uh, websites these days and, and journals and magazines that will provide you with an exchange uh, rate. And you will be able to, uh, uh, to convert uh, the amount of currency from one currency to, to another. Uh, fluctuation rate is another issue that we um, we've been dealing uh, when when it's when, when it comes to uh, to cost analyst. You need to know about the fluctuation rate, and this is could be increase or decrease at the short term. Uh, and this this increase or decrease happens because of the supply and demand of the currency, and once you compare it with other currencies as well. Um, and this, these short terms, if, even we say this is increase or decrease for the short term, but this could reflect for the long term, and this could reflect to the economic situation of a country, and you could predict the future uh, economic uh, whether it could be a dis disaster, it could be a success, uh, depends on uh, if it's a growth or uh, um, or a decrease in the value of the currency. Um, here's an example. What um, just to let you understand, and it's also listed in the in the textbook as well that I provided on on DTL. Uh, on September 19th, 2017, the exchange rate between the U.S. dollar and the uh, British bond um, was 1.35 dollar per pound. What? What 700 British bond is equal in the U.S. dollar? It's a simple, uh, simple equation. But most of the people there uh, sometimes they made a mistake in in converting this uh, this currency. So the exchange the exchange rate is 1.35, which means that you have in order to obtain to obtain one British bond, you would need one dollar and thirty five cents. Therefore. 700 British pound is equal to 700 times 1.35 and that would be 945 dollars. Uh, so this is really important because if you're going to compete globally, you need to be able to convert the currency from one to another. And here's a good example to practice your skills. Uh, but there are so many websites these days that you could easily uh, convert the currency. Uh, now we're going to move on to the concept of strong dollar versus the weak dollar. What is that? We've we have heard this in the news so many. We've heard it in the street, maybe between your colleagues or in the uh, in a in a company or in the college. Uh, so let's let's explain it in a simple and short and easy way so to let you know understand what's what we mean by the strong dollar and a weak dollar. Uh, the strong the strength of the currency, as I mentioned earlier, we could we could measure it by comparing it to another currency and the US dollar is most likely we use it these days as a standard to measure the strength the strength of other currencies so the US dollar is the the standard so we say okay what's the British pound versus the US dollar and we we measure the British uh, the British strength the British pound strength uh, once we compare it with the US dollar so when we can when we can consider the the dollar as a strong we consider we consider the dollar as a strong when we has an increase in value compared to a foreign currency some people they think this is this is good um, well actually in fact uh, let's let's talk about the impact of having increased value of the US dollar first we have more foreign goods can be imported so you could you could buy more foreign stuff you could you could import more uh, products with a US dollar because it's cheaper you're gonna you're gonna import it at a cheaper price but now for the US products it will cost more to foreign customers so uh, this will uh, lead to a weak manufacturing sector so because the foreign customers they will not able to uh, to buy your products because it's expensive for them, uh, but you, as a as a as a, uh, a U.S. resident, uh, you could import product because you could buy more product in your U.S. dollar. But for them, they can't buy your products because it's expensive, and that would lead into a weak manufacturing se uh, sector. Uh, and most of the companies um, in this case what they would do they would move to a foreign countries 
to you know lower lower the cost they they will find a lower um, labor cost and labor ex uh, lower lower expenses so they would end up by uh, moving out of the country and this will result in less jobs in the United States so uh, strong dollar it's it's really good for us to buy stuff but also it's not good for us to have manufacturing jobs and and most of our manufacturing companies will leave the country and go f go somewhere else. So maybe the option is to go with a weak dollar, and the weak dollar basically means buying less of foreign currency, uh, and this is due to the decrease of the value uh, of the dollar value. But what's the implication of the weak dollar? The implication of the weak dollar would be uh, you could you could. Uh, the, the foreign people, the foreign countries, they could buy more U.S. products because because their currency is more strong, but they, they could buy more more products, and this would result in increasing um, increasing the demand of for our products, which would result in more manufacturing, which would result in hiring more more employees, and uh, this would this eventually will result in growth in the export. Uh, sector. So, uh, strong or weak, uh, there are several advantages um, and disadvantages for both of them. Uh, sometimes it, w it would be nice to have a strong dollar. Other days would be nice to have a weak dollar. It's really, uh, it's really. Uh, what we need to do here in this country is to balance between um, between both the exporting products and importing products. We don't want to see strong dollar all the day, all the time, all the year. Uh, we we don't want to see a weak dollar every. Um, every day of the year so balancing between both of them would be great in order to have a balanced uh, growth in the country now what I want from you also now in this chapter I want you to open a spreadsheet uh, an Excel spreadsheet if you're using Excel or something similar a different product uh, you could go with a Mac product but it's gonna be very similar uh, I never used a Mac product most likely I use um, Windows product so uh, spreadsheet it's it's a great part of this class and I would like you guys to get to used to it in uh, I'm asking you to submit your assignments using a spreadsheet I know some of the questions are based on a written answer but also you could do a written answer uh, using Excel so this is not an issue but what I need from you I need you to uh, get to use uh, using Excel uh, in this class. So what is a spreadsheet? A spreadsheet basically it's a, a technology that we can use it to conduct arithmetic and financial operations. So we use it to help us to do conduct some um, mathematical and financial uh, analysis. We could use it to prepare budget, uh, create profile uh, or profit or lose statements we could use it to freecast data compare financial alternatives and we could also create some charts to support uh, uh, our conclusion the structure of a spreadsheet consists of uh, how we as you see if you if you are opening a spreadsheet you will see a, a row and columns and the rows is vertical is the vertical bars identified by the numbers one two three and columns is the horizontal bars identified by uh, alphabet uh, letters a b c each cell in the spreadsheet is defined using a column and row uh, so for example d5 is in column d and row five uh, i'm going to open a spreadsheet here uh, okay so here's a spreadsheet as you see a b c d these are the columns uh, these are one two three these are the rows so if you identify one of these cells this cell will be identified by h9 and as you see it's in this upper uh, left corner you will see the name of the of that cell so this is located in column h and a row nine. Um, um, another one right here. This is identified. This cell is identified in C and row twenty-two. 
And what we could do in this Excel, we could do a lot of math functions here. So, for example, we could you start your your equation with the equal, and then you type some number three plus five, and that would give you uh, that would give you uh, the answer for that. So, uh, also what we could do, we could uh, write a set of numbers. Uh, and use a built-in function. So for example, I'm going to find the average for these numbers. So I'm going to type E equal and then average. There is a, a, a built-in uh, function called average. And I'm going to select all these, close the parentheses, and enter. And the average is 4.85. Uh, again, one more time. I'm gonna do the average very slow uh, because this is what we're gonna we're gonna basically use a lot of the built-in functions. Uh, so, as an example, we're gonna use the average. So you start with the equal, then type a v, and you will see a list of the built-in functions here. Select one of them, which is basically the average, and then select the number. So once you select the number, click on that cell. Keep clicking all the ways, drag the, uh, the mouse, the cursor all the way down and close the parentheses and you will see um, it has been written as this. Equal, average, open parentheses, D7 all the way to D5 to D13 and that would give you um, the average. Another, another uh, built-in function that we use is the sum. So equal sum, I'm going to use all these functions, all these numbers to add the to add them together, that would be uh, that would be 34 is the sum. So, in order to write some labels for the cell, so just type average and uh, sum for that, just to identify what is this number and this number. And this is really important in this class. Uh, sometimes you you conduct a really good uh, analysis, but you don't explain, you don't interpret the number that you, you got. So you got a number, so you need to tell me about it. So it's really easy to type just a few words. I'm not asking you to write paragraphs, just write a few words. What is that number uh, means to you and what, what the decision that you would like to make based on that number. Okay, so now we're uh, Moving to the last topic here in this chapter, which is the decision making uh, methodology. So there are seven steps basically in order to make a decision. Uh, in uh, the economic and cost analysis is used as one of the tools to make financial decisions. So all this class is all about making financial decisions and making the best selection between different alternatives. In order to go over this, uh, these, these uh, steps, we need to identify where we're going to use the ECA tools or the economics cost analysis. So the, the tools basically identifying the problem. This is first number one. You go to your company and you found that there is a problem. There is an issue. And then the next step, what you need to do, you need to collect some data, some useful information that will help you to, uh, to exactly describe the problem. And then once you able to describe and collect the data to support uh, your opinion about this this issue, what would you do? You find alternatives. You select alternatives. You say, okay, well, uh, well, for example, I uh, we're, we're not able to meet the demands. Uh, what we need to do, we need to uh, find why is that? Well, why we don't meet the demand? You go to the floor plan, you, uh, to, the, uh, to the floor plant, and you see that you don't have enough a production machine or a, um, a specific uh, machine that you would use it for your production. So, okay, you say, well, um, we don't meet the, the customer demand because we don't have enough uh, machines uh, here. So what we need to do, we need to identify some alternatives. So this is number three, you identify some alternatives. You say, okay, well, it would be nice to have machine one, machine two, machine three, and you look into different suppliers, you see what's the difference between them. And now once you have different alternatives you evaluate th these alternatives based on the capacity based on the uh, based on the uh, initial cost based on the uh, um, uh, time of uh, 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 period time of life how long it will last for you 
and these kind of things. So, and this is really good for uh, economics and cost analysis to use it as a tool. And then once you identify the best alternative based on different parameters, you say, okay, this is the best alternative, you choose it. And then you go ahead and implement it. You implement, you say, okay, I choose this machine because this is gonna last uh, for longer, because this is gonna be uh, cheaper to maintain, uh, this is a good quality, and uh, this is what I've selected. And you support this with, with a financial data. And then once you implement the, the solution, you implement the machine, you review it and you follow up based on your customers. You say if you if you have met the customer's demand this time or not, uh, in and you go again, you keep you keep an eye on in your floor plant and you see if there's uh, a need for uh, additional resources to be added to your uh, machine plan. Uh, all right, well, this is the end of the chapter. Uh, if you have any question, please let me know. Send me an email or post it on D2L. I would be more than happy to uh, answer uh, your questions. Uh, thank you, guys. I hope this is helpful. See you soon.